Hi, if sewing in a zipper is something you avoid, well, stick around. I'm gonna make a zipper pouch and show you just how easy it is to insert zippers once you know the secrets to making it easy. What I have here is a panel of fabric and I have one piece that will make a really cute little front but the other frogs didn't quite line up so I'm going to sew them together with seam allowances and then I'll have a front and a back. What I want to do first is make sure that all of my frogs feet are on the same level so that they look like they're standing on the same ground and I really like using the add a quarter ruler to help me to determine the positioning because this little thick band that you see here is an accurate quarter inch seam allowance and whenever you use this to actually cut fabric make sure you don't use the thin side against the actual cutting tool but rather use this thicker side when cutting and I can go ahead and cut along that line but if I were doing something else and I just wanted to finger press or press it to show my mark then I can take and use the thin side of the ruler and just kind of press up so this is a really great creasing ruler for marking your fabric you can also use it with one of my wonderful wooden pressers and then I have a really nice crease on the fabric Now I know the toes of the frogs are an equal distance from the base of the material. And I can cut the top edge to match. So they're all the same size. Now I'm going to take these to the sewing machine and piece them together. The foot I've chosen to use is this satin edge foot. This foot has a little wire connected to the white guide and it allows you to change its position to determine seam allowances. Lower the needle so that it hovers over one of the lines on the measuring tape and then you turn the nut, moving that wire to the next quarter inch mark. And this is how you achieve an accurate quarter inch. Now I like to use my wooden pressers to press my seams open or off to one side or the other. This is the Tequila Sunrise color that we offer at Creative Feet. Now that is what's going to determine the width of my bag and you can see that my zipper is much narrower than that bag is. And the size of this is bigger by double on the actual zipper tape. After you've done that, you turn it right side out. And I like to use my presser to help me get nice corners. I should be able to form this into a nice point. This is going to end up in the seam allowance, so nobody will even see those corners. It's just to give us a really nice, clean, edge right here and we can drop this down move this up to the size that we need after I sew the two sides and I tuck in the inside and give it a nice crease and then I'm going to go ahead and cut off the zipper and that's just so that metal part doesn't 
get in the way and break a needle at some point. And then I insert the zipper into this little pocket so that it is centered on both sides. A good shot of spray starch on these little tabs is a good idea after you've got them all manipulated to the correct size that you're going to use. And you could pin this in place as well as glue it in place using our liquid-based glue. And I got my needle in the far left needle position. And as I sew, I'm going to go slowly. As that is a nylon zipper and the needle can handle it, it's still a good idea to go slow over that. And this is a quarter inch over. Now I'm going to move the guide closer to the needle and achieve a double needle look, even though we're just using a single needle. And this will give me a more consistent spacing than if I were to eyeball it. And you can see you have a nice double needle appearance on that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side on the zipper pull end. Before I cut this end off, I like to sew it together before I go ahead and insert it into the little pocket. So those are in essence a basting stitch. I'll we'll make sure that the zipper will close all the way up to that, and it will. And now my goal is to cut really close to the metal. Let me just slide it in and make sure it is over the distance we want it to be to sew those two rows of stitches equally spaced apart. And now we have a zipper. Well, the opening is narrower. The length of the zipper can now match up to a bigger bag than I planned on making before I began. And you're going to take and place right side down And so if you want it to be one side bigger than the other, you have that option by moving it. I'm going to center mine. Glue the right side of the zipper to the right side of the top fabric. And you want the zipper tape to be lined up with the edge of the material. A line of the actual glue in little dots to make sure that I have it all the way across. And then slide my finger across it so that we don't have any giant blobs anywhere. And after you have it in position, you should wait for it to actually dry so that the zipper doesn't shift on you. And you can do that by having some clips hold the zipper in place. The glue helps you to line up the fabric where there isn't any zipper to use as a guide. The Pearls and Piping Foot has this little washer that enables you to move the zipper beneath the needle if you can't get your needle right where you want it on the zipper. And how I'm governing this is based on the zipper teeth. So I'm going to move my needle over into the right needle position. And once you're on the actual zipper itself, it pretty much doesn't need you because the Pearls and Piping Foot's unique shaped tunnel kind of locks it in place for the zipper. If you feel as though you need to guide though, you can put just one finger down and as you can see, I'm coming up on the metal part of the zipper. This is when you want to stop and lower the needle. And you don't want to lower it all the way. So just take it up a little bit. So just the tip of the needle is down and then we can take and open the zipper up after raising the foot. 
If you need to, you can lift the foot even higher to move the zipper up. But honestly, what I do is I take the, t the so I miss your needle and make sure I always turn the hand roll towards you. I raise the needle up and even pull it out just for a little bit. Open that zipper up. Pull the thread back toward the spool and it will tighten that thread back up again so that you can continue. And then we can open it up. And now you can see that the stitching line is spot on right along the edge of that actual zipper teeth, even where the zipper was open. I've decided to add a three inch strip of the green to complement the bottom of the bag. And I'm going to have it be three inches up on the front of the bag and on the back. I think this will balance out the color of the zipper and the bottom of the bag and kind of give it more of a floor appearance. Left needle position. And here we go. Press that open with the iron, or if you have one of my pressers, you can postpone the heating up of the iron until you're ready to do a final press. And you can also press along the side of the zipper without risking burning the zipper with a hot iron to get it to lay perfectly flat. Always using the thick side of this ruler. I'm not going to be putting any batting in this. I'm just going to have single layer of material. So when you have a single layer of material, it you don't need to have it folded over to one side or the other. I'm not going to do any stitching in a ditch, which is generally when I like to press my seams over to one side rather than having them pressed open. Now it's time to build the other side of the bag. And I can see this side is a little bit short. So I have the option to either add more black fabric or add a stripe of green to go down both sides. Another option would be to actually size the bag down that small. But I don't want to lose any of these adorable creatures, so I'm going to add fabric to this one. Looks like it needs about a half inch on both sides. Now if it's a half inch on both sides and I'm using green fabric, it'll only be a quarter inch stripe of the green fabric on this side going down. But I think that's gonna add some real nice interest to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually do that. Keeping my eye focused on the guide, not on the needle. Definitely easier to glue it first. because we're going to be having to sew all the way around. Looks good. So that'll be one side and this will be the other. Now we're going to do the exact same thing I did before, sewing right sides together. And I know that gluing is much better than guessing. Sometimes I do a little zigzag pattern when I'm putting a zipper down instead of just dots. 
So this is like a quarter inch zigzag movement with the bottle while squeezing. Now I'm not rubbing the glue into the fabric. I'm just leaving it laying on top of the surface. And then once I have a good amount, then a just gent gentle sliding of the finger across, leaving the glue on that surface. That way it's in between the two fabrics. Back to the pearls and piping foot. And I know that with the washer on the right side, it's right for my machine. sewn zipper that opens all the way. If you're wanting to pick up this fabric, this is the information that you need. Janet White represented by TSB and Company. Back in five minutes. Screen print DAJW11128. Unfortunately, I did purchase this some years ago and have always wanted to make something from it. And so I don't really know if it's still in print. I would imagine that something this cute would not be taken out of print. I sure hope so. But if not, think of any type of panel that you may have with a repeating image like this and know that this is how you can piece it together to make it fit your project. So I'm gonna press over the zipper, but I'm gonna place my lining fabric over the top of the zipper as I do it, just to get a a nice crisp press on it. And when I do this, I push steam through to really help it have a nice crisp press. And now I have two pieces of green fabric to use as a lining material inside of the bag. They are the same size as the front and the back of the bag. And uh, we basically follow the same steps that we did for the front and back of the outward facing fabric this piece is gonna fold over to that side and there will be no raw edges showing. Once again, glue. Slide your finger across and lay that down. Take it back and do the same thing on this side. Make sure the glue doesn't go to the teeth of the zipper. If it were to do that, it would make it hard to open the zipper and you can just get it wet and re that removes the glue because this is really just water soluble stabilizer in a bottle. And then you let that dry. Make sure your needle is all the way to the right so that you don't sew the zipper closed with the sewing machine. back at the zipper closure. actually doing the lining and no one's gonna be able to see the stitch if you want you could actually reverse right now and cut your thread lift the foot and open the zipper up close it back down again no one will see the stitch it'll be inside locked inside the lining for no one to know any wiser that you actually had to do this in two different seam allowances and that is not cheating it is just a wonderful fact and this is the side that will be visible inside of the bag and there is your zipper so we're going to do the same thing on this side
it can make it easier for you if you cut that extra quarter inch off on both ends. Before I press with the iron, I like to press with the presser first because I can get right next to the teeth of the zipper. Kind of pull these fabrics apart. You don't want those fabrics to get really close to the zipper teeth because then you'll have your zipper not unzipping all the time. It'll snag. a good rule of thumb to keep the zipper open halfway while doing this to remind you not to close it when you do the final sewing. Spray starch this again. And this spraying and ironing after handling the fabric will cause it to shrink back up if you did distort it by over handling the fabric. And we want to stay just inside that zipper so you don't melt it. You want to make sure you square it off so that when you sew your seam allowances, they are catching both the lining and the reverse. We're going to use the satin edge foot and go down all the way from one end to the other. I usually don't like starting on an end, but in this case, I am going to do so. Now generally this is done by using a quarter inch seam allowance first. Then you cut down afterward half of that seam allowance and instead I'm going to use an eighth inch seam allowance because the satin edge foot gives me such accuracy that I can do that because the guide helps me to steer. So just move my needle over starting with it on the fabric. So a couple stitches forward and then back. It's really important to keep the fabrics up against that edge and it wouldn't be a bad idea to glue again. We're doing a really narrow seam allowance, which would normally be difficult to maintain, but because of the design of the satin edge foot, I can just push toward the foot. If you do not have our satin edge foot or are nervous going that small of a seam allowance, you can use a quarter inch seam allowance and cut away the fabric afterward. Keep pushing toward the foot. Now we're going to go back for a nice secure end. And now the bag is pretty much assembled and this kind of has a rustic feel. You could leave it and let it fray if you like that look. But I'm going to go ahead now and I don't have to now cut. That's the whole point of this. I can check to make sure that I secured all the way around and whoops, if you didn't, now's your chance to make sure that you did. If I had glued, I would not have had to restitch this part. Now that that bag is stitched properly, we can go ahead and turn it so that it's now wrong sides out. And this is when you really want to press well using one of my pressers to grab that corner. And if I can't get that corner to make it to be nice and square, then I'm going to go ahead and cut some fabric away. However, I have never needed to go any smaller than an eighth of an inch seam allowance to make a corner nice and clean. Okay, and now we want to press and I will once again finish it off with an iron and spray starch. If you have not double check to make sure your zipper is open. You want to open it now because you won't have an opportunity to open it afterward. And now I'm going to stitch all the way around with a 
quarter inch seam allowance. And that eighth inch seam allowance is narrower than a quarter inch, so the stitching line will exceed it and encase it and lock it inside of the construction of the bag so that it can never come out or come apart. And because this foot adjusts, I can move it over and move my needle over to the left. And now I am much further than I was on my stitching line before. And you can take a crutch or some extra fabric to raise up the bottom of the foot so that you can sew easier on the edge of the material. So a couple stitches forward and a couple stitches back. And I was already on the fabric, so now I want to go all the way to the very edge without catching this extra fabric. And now I want to come back on again. Make sure you keep your eye focused here. And depending on the material thickness that you have, you may want to also lower the needle, lift the foot, and just slide fabric underneath to level off the foot as you sew. your eye focus there and needle down at the quarter inch mark so I'm not quite at the quarter inch mark the guide helps me know that I need to do one more stitch bring the needle back down and now I can see the guide is off the edge Keeping your eye focused there. Now I'm not pushing the fabric that way, I'm pushing it toward the foot. Letting the feed dogs do the feeding. Lift and sew a stitch. Lift and sew a stitch. Go all the way off. The next thing I like to do is to make the bottom boxy. I do so by folding my bag in half and then pressing my corner out and the other one with it so both ends together and you fold them over and then use a presser or an iron to press that crease flip it over and do the opposite side you can also draw lines on the fabric to make it easier for you to follow the stitching line and then go ahead and stitch all the way across at a diagonal on both corners then you turn it right side out and your corners now allow the bottom to be boxy i'm going to go ahead and pull out those ends with the zipper tabs take your bottom and fold it in on both sides like that and we're going to go ahead and press that to the iron and then your bag has a bottom that keeps it upright and there are no exposed seams I sure hope you enjoyed learning how to make this froggy little zipper pouch that you're no longer intimidated by zippers if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. By the way, I also have a free online school. You'll find the link to it and all of the other items I used in the production of this video today in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.